idea of this video is basically uh, that you can configure uh, um, kind of notification, right? So you can receive a Jenkins notification with a failure message or a success message and also a, f a, a direct link with the report with the final results, right? Because for example, if I click here, you're going to see that everything is fine. However, in the failure one, we have an issue over here. We have the screenshot and so on, right? Hey masters, welcome back to Junk Media. Today I have an interesting video about how to integrate the Slack notification plugin with Jenkins. In this case, we are um, executing a, a regression uh, that was built in Cypress IO, right? Which is this uh, framework uh, based on JavaScript and Node.js. And um, well, the idea of this video is to send a notification in case, for example, this pipeline uh, fails or success, right? If, if we have a success message, I want to send that by, by Jenkins to a Slack channel, okay? So we're gonna be creating a, a new channel here, which is gonna be Jenkins example, for example, for instance, <laughs> okay? So I just have to create this one over here. There it is. I don't want to add any other people. And I have this new channel over here. So uh, the first thing that we have to do uh, in order to integrate our Slack with Jenkins, it, it is, well, come here to the view all members of this channel, includes me, <laughs> and uh, look for the integration step. Then you have to click on apps, right? And here we you have to look for Jenkins, okay? So uh, as soon as you have done that, you have to click on install. There it is. And then you have to click on add to a Slack over here. And then you are going to have this configuration kind of view, right? So uh, here you are going to be capable to choose the channel where you want to receive the Jenkins notifications. In this case, I want to receive them in, in the Jenkins example one and click on add Jenkins over here, right? Uh, you're gonna receive some instructions uh, here. I'm gonna try to explain you that uh, in, in a few seconds, but you have to subscribe and a like. Please do it. L let me know in the comments if, if you wanna <laughs> keep learning with me and what you want me to, to uh, research, okay? Thank you. Um, so as soon as you have done this, uh, you're gonna receive some integration settings over here. So for example, it is telling me that where I want to receive the notifications, the channel where I want to receive them. So in this case is Jenkins example, right? Uh, also we have a kind of token here. We're gonna configure in this in a few seconds too. And, uh, and I think that's basically it. As you can see, this is a preview message, but uh, we're gonna be configuring this message to have uh, more information about the job, okay? Um, well, you have to save settings over here and then configure, uh, what we have to configure our local instance of Jenkins, okay? We have to go to Jenkins in my machine over here. I have to go to the dashboard part and click on manage Jenkins. The first thing that you have to do is make sure that you have a, a plugin installed in your Jenkins. In this case, it is called Slack notification plugin over here, right? As you can see, I, ha I have a button here saying uninstall, so I already have it installed in my, in my system. So um, as soon as you have done this, the next step is going to the dashboard again, click on manage Jenkins and click on configure system. At the bottom of, the, of this view, you're gonna be capable to check this Slack uh, part and here you have to pass some parameters. You have to send the workspace, you have to send the credentials, and you have to send the, um, well, the default channel and member ID. So the, te the workspace that I have right now is this one, test workspace, as you can see in my Slack over here. Probably this is test workspace I'm telling as I'm telling you, okay? As you can see over here, that's good. And uh, then you have to send the, the channel where you want to uh, receive the notifications. In this case is Jenkins example, right? Let's me, let me just take a look again. Jenkins example over there, and that's good. I hope that I'm not doing a, a typo error. <laughs> then we have to add 
other thing, which is the credential. So you have to come here, click on add, click on Jenkins. And instead of use the kind username with password, we have to look for the secret text configuration. And inside of the secret input element, we have to send the, uh, well, basically the token that we have received. Uh, or yeah, that we have received from the app configuration in the Slack, right? So we have to copy that in the secret part and click on add over here. There it is. I think that uh, as soon as you have done this, you have to click on the secret test text that you have configured before and only have to click on save. And there it is. I think that you have this configured and we can try to prove that. Let me just build with parameters over here. I want to send this uh, set of specs and build. If, if I am not wrong, I should be receiving, uh, I am not sure, maybe I'm wrong or something. No, I, I'm not going to receive anything. Yeah, forget it. Um, we're going to be doing something else. We're going to be configuring uh, our uh, Jenkins file, this one that we have over here. Um, this one, uh, we, we did it in the last video. Um, here, as you can see, we have some parameters. Um, for example, uh, with Cypress, which is the framework that we are using right now, uh, we can send the, the scripts that you want to execute. So we can send it this by parameter. And also you can set, select the browser where you want to execute your uh, tests, right? For example, in this case, I have Chrome, Edge and Firefox. Um, well, as you can see here, we have other options, uh, the ANSI color, we have defined different stages in the testing stage. We have this command over here, which is the part where we um, will execute our, our tests, right? We have a deploy dummy stage over here too. And then we have a post build action uh, with always a statement, a statement. So we are gonna be publishing an HTML report for every single build since I have defined the keep all true. Um, so we're gonna be editing this uh, Jenkins file. So as you can see here, um, I am currently on my YouTube branch, which is this the same one that I'm showing you over here, right? And we're gonna be um, declaring some parameters and some configurations. So the Jenkins file know that as soon as we uh, have a result, we have to send this by a, a Slack notification, okay? So let's go ahead and try to do this. Um, the first thing that we have to do is basically declare a, a couple stuff. The first one is gonna be a kind of variable, which is gonna contain a key pair value, okay? Uh, it is gonna be named color map, okay? This color map is gonna contain a kind of array of, of key pair values, as I'm, as I'm telling you. The first one is gonna be success, and then inside of the success or the value of the success is going to be good. Why I am doing this? Basically, uh, when uh, you're, you're going to take a look at that in a few seconds, but basically um, we're going to take a look of the job status. And if it is success, we're going to return good. That good for uh, Slack is green, right? That's basically that, that we are doing over here. But in case the, the build status is failure, okay, we're going to be setting the message to be danger. It is going to be returning a, a red color. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Just imagine that because we're going to take a look of the final result in a few seconds and please subscribe and let a like. <laughs> um, so then we have to define an, another thing. It is a function. Okay. It is going to be named get build user. Okay. And inside of here, we have to use the return. And I have a code over here that you don't have to memorize, of course, it, which is this one. Basically, that what we are doing over here is getting the user ID, right? And we are returning it to a usage for our usage in a in a few seconds okay so just take that in your mind and we're gonna be using this in a few moments then under the the uh, agent we have to define uh, another uh, section over here which is going to be environment um here we have to declare another kind of environment variable which is going to be build user so we can get the build user with this function 
uh, at, uh, in, in the post build action. Take a look at this. I'm gonna just declare it. It's gonna be built user. And in this moment, it's gonna be an empty value. We don't have anything assigned to it. Okay, that's good. Um, then uh, I want to do the same stuff in the stages part. I want to do a dummy build. I wanted to do a dummy test, or actually it is not dummy one. We are executing our test depending on the parameters that we are receiving, right? And also we have the post build actions and here is where I want to do some stuff. The first step is going to be uh, execute a, a kind of script over here, okay? In this script part, um, what we're going to be doing is basically getting or uh -huh, yeah, returning the build user. How you can do it? I know that there are more approaches and, and you can take a look of Google how to do it, but this one I, I like it. And basically you have to use the build user uh, environment variable that we declared uh, at the beginning of this Jenkins file, right? And then you have to get build user using the, the function that we configured also at the beginning of the Jenkins file, right? Which is this one. And this is the environment variable. We are just assigning that value, right? This particular environment variable. Okay, that's good. When, once uh, you have done that, I think that the next step is configure the Slack configuration. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to do it. Uh, basically, uh, we have to use a Slack send. Okay, that's the 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 um, kind of keyword that it is going to help us to configure everything then we have to specify the channel in this case the channel is going to be jenkins example do you remember that right it is going to be jenkins example let me take a look in in the here in slack and it is jenkins example that's good okay once you have done this um then we have to define to the color and that's where that the thing that I wanted to explain you at the beginning, right? For example, we're going to be defining this color and it is going to be depending on the build status at the, at the end of the, of, of the build. Okay. So uh, we're going to be using the color map uh, variable that we defined at the beginning of the Jenkins file over here, right? And in case it is success, success or failure, it is going to be returning this value, right? So uh, the way that we achieve that is basically using um, a kind of um, trick over here, which is current current build, mm -hmm. and then we have to send the current result. Yeah, if I am not wrong, it is like this. Okay, <laughs> and then we have to configure the message, the message that we want that we want to receive. In our Jenkins channel, we can specify a lot of uh, parameters over here. I highly recommend you to check the official documentation because you can uh, actually um, tag your teammates, you can send emoji reactions, you can uh, do a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, as you can see here, th this is the colors that we can use good, warning, or danger. That's the, the thing that I wanted to explain to you and and so on please take a look at this uh, mention you can mention somebody else that's good but in this case i'm gonna uh, just send a kind of custom message and it is gonna be something like this okay the message is gonna be inside of a uh, double quotes right and um well we have to define what we want to display in the message so i'm gonna be using this syntax to reference the, the some particular um some some uh, results right so for example i want to send the current build and the current result actually okay it is gonna be a uh, if it is success or fail okay that's the message that i want to do to send but also i want to uh, send the job uh, the job name for example okay so uh, over here i have to use the same syntax over here to uh, use a variable right so i can access the environment job uh, name variable 
right? So we're going to be sending this information to then I also want to send the build number, right? The build number, we can think about it as this one over here, number three, number four, depending on the execution one, right? So let me just continue with this. And the build number can be accessed, well, in the same, in the same way, right? Uh, with solar sign at the beginning and then curly brackets. You have to access the environment variable job, uh, job name do it job name there it is uh, let me check if I am doing some mistake over here I think that job name uh, it is it is not it is bill number I'm sorry I'm doing something wrong here there it is and job name should be in uppercase there it is Okay, I also want to send something else and it is going to be the user that triggered the build. Okay, how to do it? Basically use by and then reference another variable. And in this case, we're going to be referencing the build user variable that we define at the, the script part over here, right? There, that's good. So I just have to paste that over there and there it is. Uh, then I want to reference a, a, a kind of a, a break right in the line so we we're gonna be using this syntax over here so we can uh, control that in the, in the notification and in the next line i want to uh, also receive as a parameter the tests that were executed so uh, you have to use something like this for example tests um, and the <coughs> i'm sorry and then send the parameter that we have defined in the for example, here in the as a parameter, right? So you have to use the spec value. Okay. So let me just come here and do it. It's going to be sign, say dollar sign, curly brackets, and the spec variable that, that we have defined. And also, I want to know in the, in the in, in that notification where I executed them. So, for example, Chrome, Edge, or Firefox. So we can do it, execute it at, for example, and we have to define the browser. Let me check if I, that's the name that I, that I set and that's good. The browser one, that's good. And also uh, I want to receive uh, the link of the report, the HTML report, right? And if I come here to the, for example, to the build number three, and I go to the um, HTML report, you can see that it has this uh, kind of URL, right? So the, the only difference is the build that I'm passing, right? Um, so I'm gonna try to trigger this depending on the build number that we are executing. So let's go ahead and do something like this. Um, I'm gonna break the line again, right? In you we're gonna say something like more information at and here we have or here we can mm, send the the different parameters to build this uh, message okay so for example the first step that i want to do or the first parameter that i want to send it is another environment parameter and it is gonna be env build sorry in uppercase a URL. There it is. It is gonna be meaning basically um, this this part of the URL. Let me check that. This one. Let me check the the something here. It is gonna be referencing this complete URL. Okay. And then I want to send, for example, this part of the um uh -huh. yeah i want to send this part of the of the url so we can access directly the the report of the current build okay so um we just have to do something like this i'm sorry nope we have to send something like this right and i think that we're gonna be receiving a, a, a decent message now. You're gonna understand what I'm trying to explain 
in a few seconds okay so as soon as you have done these changes in your Jenkins file I think that um, you have to go and commit these changes in the branch right so git commit m sending or actually Jenkins file updated with the slack uh, parameters for example there it is and now I also want to push this git origin push to the YouTube branch okay he's saying that origin is not git oh I see I did something wrong here it is push origin <laughs> push I'm not sure now right <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Git a uh, uh, push, yeah. Origin YouTube, right? There it is. It is working fine now. Uh, and if I check the repository, let me see. It is saying that uh, we have the latest changes, and it was committed like a minute ago, right? It is good. So I think that now if I execute this uh, my job right, which is actually uh, configured to trigger the YouTube branch, as you can see over here, right? If I trigger this, I should be receiving a notification in Slack. I hope so. It is a lot of configurations, and I I, mean, I might be something missing something in the in the in the road, right? Hope that I am not. As you can see, well, the, the, it is working as expected. We can check the console output. Uh, basically, it is triggering this, the the execution of the different test cases. If I am not wrong, if you remember in the last video, I have introduced a test case assertion error, so probably. We're gonna having a kind of issue here, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. And it is executing all the stuff. Let me see. Let's wait until it finish. And I hope that we can receive a kind of message in this lock. <laughs> it is, I'm gonna be so sad if it is not working. I, I wanted to also say thank you for all your support, but I am receiving here a, a kind of uh, well error right huh let me see why it is not working okay guys after a lot of uh, retries I have found my issue <laughs> uh, I, I have found three different issues in my explanation I apologize for that um, but I'm gonna explain you what I have done in order to get this message over here the failure one okay as you can see this this is the final message but I just want to give you the, the insights about my issues okay the first one is it's basically that I was um, specifying actually there were there was two two issues when you come here to the manage Jenkins right and you come here to the configure system you have to add um, this workspace with the it is not just the workspace name like this one it is more than it is actually you have to pass the the parameter that you receive when you're configuring the the plugin this one over here test workspace and this one right as you can see it is referencing this as team subdomain it is not referencing this exactly as a workspace that's probably why I was having some kind of issues I didn't have this situation before but it is important I did an, another fix and it was that I added this uh, number sign at the beginning of the channel I didn't uh, configure this uh, a few months ago when I did the integration but well now it is working fine and probably that's basically what is what is not working correctly uh, this is the token ID also it is the the same stuff as I, as I explained you before you just have to come here at Jenkins look for secret text uh, enter the secret over here and, and that's it then you have to select it um, but that's it guys I guess that as you can see here I'm gonna go to my example pipeline okay 
and um, well basically um, well as you can see in the pipeline right we are receiving what we configure because if if I show you this uh, example we are receiving the the failure which is referencing or actually referenced from this variable over here current build current result this current result is basically a failure right um, this example bill is is actually referencing or actually returning a null variable uh, let me see why and that's basically because I am uh, missing an L over here right let me just uh, fix this so we can check that we can also receive the bill number I'm sorry for that build number um, also the build user it is correct for example if you come here you can see that it is triggered it was triggered by junk media uh, basically i have this user in my uh, jenkins right that's correct then we have in uh, in the next line because we did this in the with this that this backslash n to break the line right we have the tests that we executed which is coming from the parameter uh, at the beginning of the of the pipeline right of the jenkins file also we have the tests and where what it, where what it was executed in this case is the browser uh, in this case is chrome right and then we have more information at we have the the current id of the or actually the host url and then we can specify the html report to get this a full report and have a, a full link right for you just to come here click and have a, a result uh, let me just commit this so we can check that uh, mm -hmm. there it is i updated the the build number and i also want to uh, well trigger a, a success scenario right so i'm going to come here to my integration folder i'm coming to the page object model example i'm gonna look for this and we're gonna be removing the issue that i have introduced okay which is a, a double s over here there it is so now we should be receiving a different message over here is gonna it should be a, a green message this line in red is basically because also we have configure the color right do you remember that in the jenkins file let me show you that in the jenkins file we have mapped the color depending on the current result right there it is um so i think that i have fixed my my issues so let me go ahead and do it again i'm gonna be executing these tests over here and i'm gonna be doing it in edge so let's go ahead and take a look of the console lock it has to be the build number 12 right that's correct and if we take a look at the console log you can see that uh, well we are configuring this browser as edge we're sending the the correct parameter over here and probably there is no error in the first test because we fixed the the issue and um, well it is in progress let's see in a few seconds we're gonna have a final result in this case it has to be a, a success message a green message actually right as you can see it is uh, sending the, the the result to a slack with all the parameters over here right and if I come here to slack you can see that I am receiving the success uh, example build number 12 by Young media so uh, basically that's the idea of this video the idea of this video is basically uh, that you can configure uh, um, kind of notification right so you can receive a jenkins notification with a failure message or a success message and also a, a, a direct link with the report with the final results right because for example if i click here you're gonna see that everything is fine however in the failure one we have an issue over here we have the screenshot and so on right 